this morning to plead with you. If you're here this morning to kill your unborn child, I'm here to plead with you to reconsider your choices. That is a child in your womb. That child does not deserve the death penalty. That child, that little boy, that little girl in your womb has done nothing wrong, nothing deserving of death. That child did not choose to be conceived. That was your choice. It was your choice to conceive that little boy, that little girl. And even if you now conclude that it was a mistake to conceive that little boy, that little girl in your womb, you could not reverse it. And killing this child, killing this unborn child that is growing in your womb will not change you from being a mother to not being a mother. It will not change you from being a father to not being a father. You're still a father, you're still a mother. Even if you kill your child this morning, you'll just become the mother or father of a dead child. A child that you gave a murderer the permission to kill. And while the laws of the land to some degree, some of you might be breaking a law this morning in the land. I know the laws of the land allow you to kill your only, kill your your own unborn child. God doesn't allow it. God does not allow you to kill your child this morning. And God's laws ultimately what will judge you. When you stand before God on judgment day, he will not judge you according to man's law, according to the laws of Georgia, According to the laws of the United States of America, he will judge you according to his law. And his law says, thou shalt not kill. His law says that babies are fearfully and wonderfully made. <clears throat> his law says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. <clears throat> Don't be deceived. You can use all the excuses in the world that you want to try to justify your murder of your unborn child this morning, but God will not accept it. God will not receive it. You can believe all the lies of those who are pro-death, who are pro-infanticide, like my body, my choice, which is nonsense because you don't have four arms, four legs, 20 fingers, 20 toes, two hearts, four lungs two mouths, two noses, four ears. You don't have that. That is someone else's body growing inside your womb. If your complaint is, I don't care to have someone growing inside my womb, well, your complaint's with God. God's the one who set it up that way. And complaining against God is not going to help you at all. It's not going to change the facts. It's not going to change your situation. If you don't want another person growing inside your womb, then stop having sex. It's that simple. Keep your legs closed, keep your pants on, and be abstinent. And if you want to have sex, then you get married. This is what God says in his word. Many of you, you, you want the, the pleasure that comes from sex, but you don't want the responsibility that comes from that act, including having a child. But you murdering your child will not make things right. Murdering your child will not reverse the conception of that child. Murdering your child will not make things quote unquote go back to normal. Murdering your child will just make you a murderer, just make things worse on you. Because now, not only have you fornicated and got pregnant out of wedlock, now you're murdering your child. You will not cover up your sins. You will not erase your sins. It just adds to your sins. Because sin will never solve the problems that other sins make. 
you can't solve the problem of sin with more sin. You can only solve the problem of sin by stopping sinning, not continuing in it, by instead turning to the Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless Savior who died for you on the cross, the one who wants to deliver you from all your sin and all your condemnation, Jesus Christ. He's the one who can help you in your situation. He's the one that can deliver you from your sin. He doesn't guarantee deliverance from the consequences, the natural earthly consequences for your sin. He doesn't, doesn't guarantee you that. Oftentimes we have to suffer for our sins even when we turn to Jesus for help. But we do have this, that he will help us. He will forgive us. He will grant us everlasting life as a free gift if we turn from our sins, forsake our sins, and believe upon him, and turn to him as Lord, and allow him to rule and reign in our life to the point where we're no longer living a sinful life, we're living a righteous life, the life God wants us to live. He is a, he is a, a, a so that's hope for you this morning, and it's not in this abortion clinic, it's not in killing your child, it's in following him. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah, you're welcome. God bless you. So there's hope for you in Jesus. Now, I've never gotten a woman pregnant out of wedlock. I've never had an abortion, but I've done lots of sinning in my past before I became a follower of Jesus. And Jesus saved me. He gave me the peace that passes understanding. He gave me the, the hope that wells up into eternal life. The hope that no man can give in this life. It's found in Jesus, and he comes to give life, and more life more abundantly. But the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Who are you being like this morning when you're coming here to kill your child? If you're coming here to have an abortion this morning, who are you being like? Like Jesus, who gives life, and life abundantly? Or are you being like the devil, who comes to kill, steal, and destroy? If you're here to kill this morning, you're not being anything like God. God gave life. And no matter what the circumstances are surrounding your situation of getting pregnant out of wedlock or getting having an unwanted pregnancy, no matter what your circumstances are, it is God's will now that you have that child. It is God's will now that you be responsible. Maybe a mother, a father to that child and not murder your child. Not bring your child to these so-called doctors, these so-called nurses who are surviving and thriving off of blood money, off of killing your baby. Please don't kill your child. Are you here this morning to have an abortion, ma'am? Ma'am, are you here this morning to have an abortion? It's not God's will that you kill your child, ma'am. It's not God's will that you use killing your child as a form of birth control because you want to thrive in this pleasure of sexual immorality, but not deal with the consequences thereof. Reconsider, man, there's other choices. Adoption. You can have the child yourself and be a mother. And that's what's wrong with this culture, this culture we live in today that is so um, enthralled with sexual immorality. Women dressing with barely any clothing on. Men treating women like a piece of meat, like an object to fulfill the sexual desires of their flesh. It's not God's will that you allow yourself to be treated that way. To kill your own child, your own offspring. That's, that child has half your DNA. That's not a blob of goo, a clump of cells in your body. That is a living, breathing, that is a human being in there. There's a human being in that, inside your womb that deserves life. Does not deserve the death penalty for because of your sin. It is your sin. The reason that's the reason why you're here because of your sin, because of your crimes against a holy God. That child has committed no sin. That child is innocent in God's eyes, having done nothing wrong. That child is blameless. That child has not hurt you. Has not harmed you. Not only that, that child can be a blessing to you. I myself 
Been married for 21 and a half years now. I have eight children from this union. And they're all a blessing to me. Do they cost money? Yes. Do they cost time? Yes. Do they cost me sleep? Yes. Do they take me away from other things that I used to do? Yes. Is it all worth it? Of course it is. My children are a blessing to me. No matter how difficult it may be, no matter how much sleep I've lost, how much money and time I've lost, they're completely worth it, all of them. I wouldn't trade them for all the money, all the time, all the hobbies, all the sexual immorality, all the pleasure in the world. I would not trade one of them for that. I love them all very dearly. And if someone tried to harm one of my children, they'd have to answer to me. They'd have to kill me first before they could harm them. If I love my children and I care for them, and they were ever put in harm's way, I would seek to get them out of harm's way to the point where I'm willing to even put myself in harm's way to help them, to protect them. That's what a real father, a real man does. He lays his life down for his family members and for his friends. But here you are today laying down your own child's life so you can do whatever you want to do. You may say, well, I'm not ready to be a mother yet. Well, then you should have had sex. I'm not ready to be a mother yet. Well, then give the child up to somebody else who is ready to be a mother. There are couples out there who want to have children and who have not been able to have children. They're seeking to adopt. And you can provide them with a child whom you're not seeking to take care of, not seeking to be the mother to. You can provide them with a child when they can't have children. So you don't realize there's, there's millions of women around the world and couples around the world who can't have children biologically, naturally. And one of the ways they, they seek to solve this issue and still be parents is by adopting a child who someone else gave birth to. You, you don't understand the blessing you have that you're able to have some fruit from your womb. And here you are destroying it. It's like having an apple tree that will not bear apples and then having an apple tree that's thriving with juicy, delicious apples. So taking all those apples and throwing them into the fire. Taking all those apples and destroying them, not eating one of them. That's what you're doing to your, your child this morning. That's the fruit of the womb. And God has blessed you with it. No matter what the circumstances are, that child can be a blessing that has come out of a cursing, your sin. Not only is your fornication, your sexual immorality sin, but also your hatred in your heart towards your own child is sin. The Bible says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer at heart. And of course, oftentimes this hatefulness in your heart will lead to actual murder like it is this morning. The Bible says that murderers will not inherit God's kingdom. Don't deceive yourself. Don't comfort yourself with lies. Don't comfort yourself with false things, with justifications for your sin. Because God will not allow one justification for sin on Judgment Day. You can't claim ignorance. You can't claim that so-and-so told you this and they lied to you. Those things will not work on Judgment Day. If you're taking a pill, and you haven't taken the second pill yet to kill your baby, there's a chance it can survive. If you're taking a pill and you haven't taken the second one yet, there's a chance it can be reversed. Go to abortionpillreversal.com. Did you come here today, ma'am, to kill your child? To have an abortion? Were you able to save your child this morning from the murderers inside? If by chance you're here for some other reason this morning, because I seriously doubt, because your silence is deafening for all of you walking in and out of this place, this baby murdering place. But if by chance you're here for some other reason, you need to understand this place thrives on killing babies for a living. 
God did not give you that baby to come here and kill him or her. God gave you that, that baby so you can become a mother, a responsible, mature woman who loves instead of hates her children, who takes care of instead of leading them to destruction. If you, if you don't have a good example of what a mother should be, or for the men, if you don't have a good example of what a father should be, it starts with this. I've been a father for over 19 years now, but being a good parent starts with this. Don't kill them. Don't kill them. Don't kill your child. Overcome all the wickedness, all the temptation this world to kill your child. All the pleas and the false promises of convenience and you're having a better life. Becoming a murderer does not give you a better life. You understand? And as many women who I've talked to through the years who are now Christians who've had an abortion. One woman I saw who posted on one of my videos recently said she killed, she's killed two of her children. And they all regret it. Not one of them coast on with their life and say it's no big deal. They all regret it. You will, if you go through with killing your child here this morning, you will regret it. You'll never get away from it. You know you're guilty of killing your child. And while you aren't the one who sucked them up the vacuum, you aren't the one who created the pill, the poisonous pill that kills that child, that unborn child, you are the one who gave the permission to suck your child up through a high-powered vacuum. You are the one who, who swallows the pills that's been given to you. You have a free will choice this morning to not even make this appointment in the first place, let alone wait a week or two and have all that time to think about it and then eventually come to this place early in the morning and have your child kill it and, and lay on that table and open up your legs in a sinful way again and allow them to destroy your child by sucking them up through a high-powered vacuum. It's wicked. There's judgment awaiting you. And the only hope you have is in Jesus Christ. But to have the salvation, the mercy, the forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers through what he did for you on the cross, you must forsake your sins. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God, and he will lift you up. See, so God is calling you to humble yourself. God is calling you to forsake your wickedness, to wash your hands of your sin, and to turn to the only one who can truly cleanse you of your sins. When you get out of this place today, if you go through with killing your child today, I pray not. I pray you reconsider and change your mind. But if you go through with killing your child today, you're going to feel dirty, and rightly so, because what you're doing today is wicked, it's filthy. But you won't be able to wash it away. You can't go home and wash your hands of this. And it, it makes you feel at peace with what you've done. See, your sin is leaving a stain upon your soul. Your sin is laying, laying a, leaving a stain upon your spirit. How do, you, how do you wash dirt from a soul, from a spirit? How do you do that? How do you wash your heart clean? It's not like washing your hands or taking a shower or a bath. It's not like putting... Um, hand sanitizer on your hands doesn't work like that. This, 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 this stain you're leaving upon your life by being a sinner is not like uh, germs or viruses or COVID. You can't, you can't just wash it down a, a sink drain or a shower stall drain. You need something more powerful than that. Soap won't wash away your sins. will not make you feel clean on the inside. When you walk away from this place feeling dirty for the wickedness you're committing here today. But the Bible says there is one thing that can wash you clean of your sins. That's the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for your peace was upon him, and by his stripes you can be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. See, Jesus Christ has provided a way out of your sin. Not this account up in heaven where you can just keep on sinning and keep on pulling from this account and getting forgiveness and keep sinning and keep pulling from this account and getting forgiveness. No, the, the point of, of washing, receiving the washing of the blood of Jesus for your soul, for your spirit, to wash away your sins, your, your wicked choices, is to stop doing it, is to never do it again, is to walk away from sin for good, forever. That is a point. And the Bible says he was, he died for all. Second Corinthians 5, and he died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for us and rose again. So Jesus died and rose again from the grave and defeated death to destroy the works of the devil in your life. That you would not keep being a sinner you would not kill your child, but let that child live. Are you here today to have an abortion, man? Are you here today to kill your child? Why are you doing that? What wrong has that child done to you, man? How has that child wronged you? Has that child done something deserving of death, man? No, that child deserves to live. And it's a hypocrite that you are living right now and you want to kill your child. So you don't give your child the same chance that your mother gave you. No reality, before God, you have no authority to do such a thing. You understand though, if you've taken the first pill, it's possible it can be reversed. Your child can still live. You don't have to kill your child, your grandchild. They can live. He or she can live. It's a shame I see people bring their children here. I've, I've, I've seen pastors, God forbid, pastors bring a congregant here to kill their child. Wicked murderers that these people are. God will deal with you. He will deal with you in justice. He will deal with you in judgment. But he can deal with you in mercy. For God is a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. If you'll turn from your sins, if you'll repent of your sins, if you'll relent from your, your wickedness, God will relent from the harm he seeks to bring upon you. I just quoted from Jonah 4.2 a second ago. That God is a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. That's Jonah 4, 2. And Jonah said this about the Ninevites and how God dealt with the Ninevites. God was going to destroy the whole city of Nineveh because how wicked they were. In 40 days, he was going to destroy them. That was Jonah's message. You'll be destroyed in 40 days. There was no alternative provided to them. And then the Ninevites repented and sackcloth and ashes and turned from their sins and God did not destroy them. Don't bring destruction upon your life by being a killer of your child, a murderer of your child. That child has done nothing wrong. That child deserves to live. 
no matter what the situation or circumstances, you have no excuse before God to kill your child. No matter what kind of attitude you give, no matter how strongly you say it, or how passionate you are about killing your child, God is still against it. God is still for life. God wants that child to live. You have no excuse to kill that child. Are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to murder that little boy, that little girl? Let them be sucked up by high-powered vacuum? Or swallow two poisonous pills that kills them? Is that what you're here to do? The only one who can truly help you is Jesus. These so-called doctors, these so-called nurses who thrive and survive on blood money, the blood of children, they can't help you. They can't even help themselves. They're wicked. They don't care about you. They don't care about your unborn child. You, know, you, can, know, you can learn a lot about somebody. You can learn a lot about someone by how they treat someone who is vulnerable, who is helpless, who is hopeless. Someone who needs their help. Someone who needs some compassion from them. You can learn a lot about somebody by how they treat people like that. And such is the state, such is the case with your child this morning. For some reason, our wicked government, whether state or federal, even though Roe versus Wade was reversed and struck down, that our state government still says that abortion is okay in certain circumstances, certain situations. Under six weeks, if a heartbeat has not been detected, you can abort your child. And this wicked politician recently said that that's not really a harpy as a, a manufactured mechanical sound. That's ridiculous. And another the same politician said that, um, that if you kill your child, you can help yourself with inflation because children cost money. What a wicked thing to say. What a wicked thing to say. A murderous woman she is. But so many people seek to justify their sin justified their wickedness before God, and it's not going to work. You cannot justify your wickedness. God is going to deal with you, and he's trying to deal with you even now before you go through with a, a life-altering, life-changing decision, not for the good, but for the bad. Now, we all have these forks in the road, so to speak. When we decide, we make decisions that will affect the rest of our life for good or evil. Do I go drink beer for the first time? Do I smoke some weed or do drugs for the first time? Do I have sex outside of marriage? Do I kill my child because I so-called am not ready to be a mother? Let me tell you this. I became a father over 19 years ago. And I, I can't tell you anything that would make you completely ready for being a parent. But you learn. You figure it out because you love, you care, and you want to do whatever it takes to help this little human being that you helped conceive, survive and thrive and, and make it in this world. It just takes love. True love. But if, you, if you're here today to kill your child, there's no love in your heart. That's for sure. You don't even love yourself if you're here to kill your child. The only person you love right now is the devil if you're here to kill your child because he's a, he's a murderer from the beginning. Always been a liar, murderer, since he's fell from his holy place in heaven. He's been a liar and a murderer. You're following in his footsteps today. And the Bible says God wants you to repent, turn from your sins. And don't, don't try to give me this excuse, I can't afford the child, because the what kind of cars all of you are driving this morning, or the fact that you're driving a car at all this morning tells me you could afford a child if you wanted to. Your priorities are just in the wrong place. I mean, how many here in this, in this building, in this parking lot today, who are here to kill their child, who use this flimsy excuse, I can't afford the child, how many of you have cell phone bills? How about cable bills? 
How many of you go out to eat? How many of you buy beer and cigarettes? How many of you buy drugs? What things are you buying that you don't need? What things are you buying that are just wants? Clothing, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, getting your, uh, your eyebrows done, whatever it may be. You're doing all kinds of things that are not needed, that are definitely nowhere, nowhere near as important as that child growing in your womb. It's not right for you to kill your child this morning. Please turn from it. Don't kill your child. Ma'am, are you here this morning to kill your child? Are you here this morning to have an abortion? To have that child violently sucked out of your womb with a, with a vacuum? Are you here today to take a couple pills to kill your child? So that the child will be aborted? It's not right. You know, a couple years ago now, there was a huge thing that happened in, in Minnesota. This man named George Floyd who died on the streets with a police knee on his shoulder, on his back, and all kinds of uproar went up because he was crying out to his mama. Now, we now know that mama was a nickname for his girlfriend, but let's assume he was actually crying out to his actual mama for a second, and he died. There's all kinds of questions about what, why he died and how he died what was the cause of his death. But let's assume it was injustice, that it was a police officer doing what is wrong, which is why he died. And here you are today, killing your own child, who has no voice for himself or herself. They have no way to speak up for themselves. They can't run away. They can't resist. They can't cry out for help. They can't even cry out, Mama. But if your child who you're here to kill this morning could cry out, I'm sure they'd say something like this, Mama, please don't kill me. Mama, I promise I'll be a good boy, a good girl. I won't do anything wrong, Mama. Please give me a chance. Don't let that bad man, that bad woman kill me. Don't let them suck me up out of the womb. Mama, please don't take those pills. Mama, please don't poison me. That's what that child would say. And all this uproar went up for George Floyd. What about your child? What about your child? Where's the uproar for all the children being killed here this morning? Where's the protest? Where's the violence? Where's the looting for the children being killed here this morning who can't even cry out for themselves? Amazing how hypocritical you people are. I'm sure many of you had uproar for what happened with George Floyd, but when it comes to your own baby, eh, let's just kill him. Let's just kill him so we can have some more sex and not have responsibility. It's wicked. It's unrighteous. And God will not hold him guiltless who sheds the blood of an innocent child. God's going to deal with you in truth. He's going to give you justice. Jesus Christ said at the end of Revelation, last chapter, he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So the Lord Jesus Christ will give you, who will reward you according to your works. Whether your reward is eternal life with him in his kingdom, or your reward is eternal hellfire. And I'm willing, I'm willing to guess, I'm willing to safely assume, that many of you who are in here this morning, you might even went to church this past Sunday. What good is that going to do you? What good is it going to do you? You went to church two days ago, and now you're here killing your baby. And I know you planned this out long before this past Sunday. You had to make an appointment. This place makes you make appointments. So you had to have made an appointment. So you, did you make an appointment a couple weeks ago when you went to church twice since then and acted like you weren't going to come here and kill your child today? Is that what you did? Have you seared and corrupted your conscience that much? Ma'am, are you able to save your child from the baby murders inside there? 
Are you able to save them from the baby killers? Save them, deliver them from death, man. Be a mother, not a murderer. Those men who are within the sound of my voice who have brought their child here to destruction today, be a father, not a coward. It's not God's will that you kill your child this morning. Don't kill your child. That child deserves to live. It's amazing in this country that we have freedoms, but we don't have the freedom to be born. And what, what good, tell me, what good are freedoms? Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. What good are those freedoms if you can't be born to enjoy them? I mean, the freedom to be born, the freedom to life, it should be the, the, the primary freedom there is. That no one has a right to take your life and to kill you. They have a right to be born. That once a man and woman have conceived a child, that they have no right to take the life of that child. A child has a right to life. And you have no right to take that child's life. No matter what the state tells you. No matter what the government laws say. You have no right to kill that child. A child has a right to live. Make all the excuses you want in the world. It doesn't change your responsibility before God. Jesus Christ commands you to repent. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. That times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. See? Killing your child will not bring refreshing times. Killing your child will bring bitterness, regret, anger. You know, many women who, who kill their child who have an abortion, they can't have children later on. There's all kinds of horrible side effects to killing your child. Bleeding, depression, suicidal thoughts. These are side effects that are to be expected when you kill someone else. Are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to have an abortion? If so, be a father, not a coward. Don't be a coward and lead your child to destruction. Protect that child with your own life. Don't pay for this life to be snuffed out. You're essentially taking your child not to a doctor or a nurse this morning, but to baby assassins baby murderers. I mean, imagine it. Let's, let's say there was people with guns, with scopes, snipers, who set up near big parks where children would play. And they sat on a hill all day, and their parents came up and paid them, and they sniped out their children with a bullet. Would that be any different? Would that be better than what's going on here this morning? Or what if they just put, instead of, instead of uh, using a bullet, they, they put these pills in their, their shotguns, their rifles, and they shot them into the mouths of the mothers. And the baby then died. The child then died. Would that be okay? What would be the difference between using the high-powered vacuums they use in this place to suck up a baby out of your womb or give you two pills to kill your child? What difference would it be in that and shooting a toddler, a two-year-old, a four-year-old? Well, they're out of the womb. What does that mean? The baby in your womb is just as much a human being as the baby outside your womb. What is the difference? There is no difference. One's more developed than the other. So what? My teenagers at home are more developed than my eight-year-old. Does that mean I can kill my eight-year-old too? Where's the line drawn? This world has engaged in subjective morality, making their own rules, and then declaring them righteous. It's not the way it works. God makes the rules. God determines what is righteous and what is unrighteous. And God says that killing babies is unrighteous. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. Sinners won't inherit God's kingdom. 
fornicators and liars and thieves, drunkards, pot smokers, murderers won't inherit God's kingdom. Don't let that be you. If that is you, make it stop being you. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Give your life to him. Surrender all to him. Ma'am, are you here this morning to kill your baby? Ma'am, are you here this morning to kill your child? To have an abortion? Ignoring me won't help you on Judgment Day. I'm here to tell you the truth out of love. I'm here to help you. I'm here to care for your soul. There's no good reason to kill your child. No good reason to kill your child. Jesus is calling you to repentance this morning. He's calling you to childlike, humble faith. And destroying this child so you can continue on with the pleasure you get from sexual morality without any kind of responsibility does not make it all right. I hope from now on, all those who are here who are killing your child, that every time you have sex outside of marriage, you'll think of your dead baby. That'll be a turn off real quick, won't it? Think about that child you had slaughtered, that child you had killed. And I pray if you don't come to repentance, you kill your child this morning, that every time you try to have sex outside of marriage from here on out, you'll be thinking of that dead baby. And what your sin cost you. Sin is costly. Your sin is going to cost you this morning. And it's definitely costing that child, that's for sure. Your sin is costing that child his or her life. Your murder. And you can't reverse it. You know, if you were to lie to someone or steal from somebody, you can go back to them and apologize, restore what you've stolen. Those things can happen. But when you murder someone, you can't say sorry to them. You can't reverse the damage you've done. It's already been done. It's irreversible. And you're going to regret it. Murderers will not inherit God's kingdom. The Bible says that for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, Jesus died for you. Not because you were righteous. Not because you were good. Did you come all the way from Virginia to kill your baby? Uh, that's what I thought. You're wicked. You're a wicked woman. You're a murderer. Killing your baby. Driving all the way from Virginia to kill your baby. And you're laughing and smiling about it. Won't be laughing on Judgment Day, sinner. No, I won't shut up, sinner. No, I won't shut up, sinner. Repent. You're wicked. You're wicked. I hope every time you have sex out of marriage from here on out, you think about that baby you killed. No. No, I won't shut up. No, I won't shut up. Are you here to kill your child this morning, sir? You here to have an abortion this morning? Lead someone to an abortion? It's an abortion clinic, sir. Thank God you're getting going to the wrong building. Praise God for that. Don't want to be the murderer, you know what I mean? Don't want to kill your child. Isn't it amazing that when the truth comes out, people get so angry? I wonder why that girl was so angry. I wonder why she was flipping me off and dropping F-bombs like crazy at me and getting angry at me. Why was she so angry? Because she knows I'm right. If what she was doing here this morning was no big deal, why get angry? Why give someone the middle finger? Why drop F-bombs left and right if it's no big deal? If it's just a blob of goo, a clump of cells, not really a baby, not really living and breathing, you're not really committing murder here this morning, if things will just go back to normal and you won't feel bad about it, then why get angry? Because you know I'm right. You know, but I'd rather have someone get angry than someone ignore so I'm be so apathetic, so cold-hearted, so hard-hearted. It's like it didn't even happen. They don't even care. 
that person is in a way worse place than someone who ignores and ap is stuck in apathy. He doesn't care. But isn't it amazing that someone will drive all the way from Virginia to kill their baby? I mean, I've seen people who come since Roe versus Wade was abolished, done away with. I've seen people come here from Alabama, not too far away, right? Maybe about an hour, hour and a half, depending on where they are in Alabama. Maybe two or three hours, depending on where they are in Alabama. I've seen people come from Florida, from Louisiana, from Tennessee, even from Texas. I've seen people come all the way from Texas. I mean, what are you doing? Are you making like a getaway for yourself? Come to Atlanta, have some fun, party it up, and yeah, go have an abortion too. It's wicked. You are a murderer if you kill your child this morning. And God will not let you go free. The only hope you have now if you go through it is to repent, to give your life to Jesus Christ, to, tr to truly turn from all your sin and turn in faith to him who loved you at the cross, who died for you. Remember, are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to have an abortion? Save that child from destruction, man. Turn around. Go back to your car. Flee this murderous place. What you're doing this morning will not bring your family honor. It will not reverse things. Man, don't go back to your car and get a mask and go back in there. Just flee this place altogether. You don't have to even cancel your appointment. Just run away. Save your child's life. Your child deserves your help, not your harm. Do what is right for your child. Lead them away from destruction. Don't lead them to destruction. And isn't it amazing that so many of you in this place will require you to put masks on to save you from a and others from a supposed virus that, that can kill people when it has a less than 1% kill rate? They'll make you put a mask on because of a, a virus has a less than 1% kill rate. Even when the, the, the box those masks come in say will not protect you from coronavirus. But then you walk into that place that has almost a 100% kill rate for babies. Isn't that amazing? The, the blindness that you'll put a mask on to, to, to suppo supposedly protect yourself from a virus, but you'll, at the same time you'll go in there and kill your child. And don't tell me, once again, don't tell me you can't afford a child when you're driving nice cars. Last time you had your hair done, how much did it cost? Your nails. How much did it cost? Last clothing you bought, where'd you buy it from? How much did it cost? What's your car payment like? It's amazing. The blindness, the hypocrisy of coming to this place to kill your child. Don't kill your baby here this morning. Don't have an abortion here this morning. It's not right to kill your baby, to kill your child. Do what is right. Follow Jesus Christ. Man, don't kill your child. Give your child up for a, a, adoption at least. Let someone else raise your child. If you're concerned about your family members, your friends finding out about it and you have having causing dishonor to your family. What's more dishonorable than, than killing your child? A helpless, vulnerable, weak, voiceless human being. Can you imagine that? Imagine someone walking up to a, a, a child on a corner, a street corner that was lost, couldn't find his mother or father. Maybe the child was mute and blind and deaf. Just this hopeless creature who needed help. And someone camped in and shot it in the head. Said, you're useless to society. We don't need you here anymore. How brutal. How cold-hearted. How hard-hearted do you have to be to do such a thing as that? The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is willing to have mercy on you. He's willing to abundantly pardon you of your sins. But you got to repent. You got to seek him while he can be found. You got to call upon him while he's still able to be called upon. There's going to come a point in time where you no longer have a chance to call upon Jesus. There's going to come a point in time where you no longer have the chance to get right with God. Don't let that be you. Seek Him now. Cry out to Him now. Humble yourself now. Put aside your pride. Put aside your stubbornness. Put aside your hard-headedness. And call upon Jesus. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He can help you. This wicked place and the wicked people in it could not help you. But Jesus Christ can help you. Why turn to those who really cannot help you? All authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And he's truly the one who can help you. Not these wicked so-called doctors and nurses in this place. They can't help you. But Jesus Christ can help you. He's the only hope for sinners. Jesus Christ is the only hope for sinners. Turn to Him. Live for Him. Cry out to Him. Obey Him. He is your only hope. These doctors can't give any hope. There is no hope found in them. That is producers of death. Producers of destruction. And you doctors so-called and nurses so-called in this place who work here, I don't know how you live with yourself. I don't know how you live knowing that your job, your occupation is killing babies for a living. That you terminate lives, innocent lives, for a living. How, how, do, you, how do you deal with it? How do, you, how do you sleep at night? Man, there's still a chance. You can still save your child. You don't have to kill your baby. Just get in your car and drive away and go home. Get right with God. Give your life to Jesus. Turn to Him. He is the only way that you can be saved. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. The Bible says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. But Jesus Christ. You may say, well, I'm not a Christian. I'm a... I'm a Hindu, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Muslim. Well, it don't matter what religion you call, what religion you say you call yourself by, or what religion you say you adhere to, or what God you call upon. It doesn't matter what you say. The truth is still truth. Murder is murder. Killing that baby is murder. Don't kill that baby. Be a man. Take responsibility. Don't go through with it. If you go through this, you'll regret it the rest of your days. If you change your mind and do what is right, you'll be thankful that you made this choice the rest of your days. I'm here to tell you, I have eight children. I was there for all eight of their births. You're going to miss out on the joy, the overwhelming joy of seeing that child for the first time and holding him or her in your hands. I have four sons. I have four, four daughters at home. And all the joy in, the, in, in my life they've brought, the first words, the first time they sat up, the first time they, they crawled or rolled over, the first steps, the laughter, the smiles, the poopy diapers where they poop it out and go up to their neck with the poop and they have to clean it up afterwards. That's kind of funny. You're going to miss out on all these things. The first time doing schoolwork. The first time driving. I've, I've taught four of my children to drive now in the middle of teaching two of them. You're going to miss out on all these things, all the blessings 
in life of having a child you're going to miss out on because you're here to kill your child this morning. You're forsaking all those blessings. And here we have people here this morning from Mississippi, from Virginia, from Alabama, coming from all over the place to kill their child, just to kill your child. Most of you don't drive this far away from your home, probably all of you coming from different states. Don't drive this far away from your home for a job, to make money, to make a living. But you'll drive this far to make a killing. You won't drive this far to make a living, but you'll drive this far to make a killing, the killing of your own child, the assassination, the planned assassination of your own child. I know you didn't come here this morning as a walk-in, all the way from Alabama, all the way from Mississippi, all the way from Virginia to walk in and kill your child. You plan this out ahead of time. You premeditated this murder. You know, even in the law of Moses, if there was a death by accident, there may be some mercy available. It's called manslaughter. But if there's a death on purpose, a premeditated killing of someone, anybody, you're in trouble. You know, in the law of Moses, in the, in the Old Testament, if a woman was pregnant with child and got between two men and tried to stop them from harming each other, tried to stop the fight, and the woman was killed and the child was, or the, even the child was, just the child was killed, that person was put to death no matter what. Don't kill your child. God desires the fruit of the womb. He desires godly offspring. If you've taken one pill and you haven't taken the second poisonous pill to kill your child then, there's a chance that child can be saved. Go to abortionpillreversal.com. There's a, there's a building, building 531. It has PAC, a PAC on the outside. They can help you. They can really help you with your, with your pregnancy. This place cannot. 531, just three buildings down from where you're at right now. They can truly help you with your pregnancy. They'll give you free medical care. They'll do get you in touch with people who can help you financially. Maybe someone who wants to adopt you even. Adopt your, adopt your child. They can help you. But this place is nothing but death. Nothing but destruction. And I pray this place, this, this business, a preferred woman's health clinic, or whatever it's called, I pray you go out of business. I pray you go bankrupt. Wouldn't be able to survive. Isn't it amazing that in a, in, a, in a place where we have inflation, people not being able to afford certain things, isn't it amazing they can still afford abortion? They can't afford all kinds, they can afford killing their baby. Don't kill your child. Remember, are you here today to kill your child, to have an abortion? Is that what you're here to do? Don't kill your child. That child deserves to live child deserves a chance at life. You may say, well, well, having this child is going to cost me a lot. Killing that child will cost you much more. Guarantee. Killing that child will cost you much more. Killing that child will cost you your soul, your eternity. Don't go through with it. Repent. Forsake your sins. Turn in childlike, humble faith to Jesus Christ. He can help you. He can save you. He can deliver you. But this place can't save you at all. Can't help you at all. Abortion is wrong. Abortion is wicked. Killing your child is wicked. Don't go through with it. There's, there's help for you. People who really love you and care for you, who want to help you. They're out there. They're three buildings down. And I'll issue this, this offer. Don't do this every single time, but if it'll stop you from killing your child, I will adopt your child. It's a legitimate offer, not a fake offer. I have eight children myself. I'm willing to adopt your child if it'll stop you from killing your child. How you men can come here and lead your child to destruction, I have no idea. I don't know how you do it. I could never do it. 
someone wanted to hurt my child, I would put my body in between the person that wanted to hurt my child and my child. They had to kill me first. You know, even in the wild, wild animals will go to great extremes to protect their babies. The polar bear, the grizzly bear mother, who has cubs, whether one, two, three, whatever it may be, even if she encounters a male who is like twice her size, she goes into mama bear mode and will tear that, ba that male bear up to protect her cubs. Even a dumb animal who doesn't have a moral ethic, a moral code given to, given to it by God, even they will go to great extremes, putting their own life on the line, great extremes to protect their young, their offspring. And here you are here leading your child to destruction. There's no other creature in the universe who leads their child to destruction like you are. Who brings their, their offspring to someone of their kind to kill them so they don't have to be a mother or a father and have responsibility. Isn't that amazing that even animals won't do what you're doing? Even animals won't do what you're doing. There's a, there's a cartoon movie called Nemo, Finding Nemo. And in that movie, the, this mother and father clownfish had, had a bunch of eggs. And this really dangerous fish came along, wanted to eat those eggs. And the mother died to protect those eggs. And only one of them survived. And so you had Nemo. That's a cartoon. And a fish. Are not humans more valuable than fish? Yes, humans are made in God's image. Fish are not. Ma'am, are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to have an abortion? Don't kill your child. That's not a clump of cells in your womb. That is a child growing in your womb. It's not right to kill that child. Is that your IQ? Is that your IQ? Yeah, give me the middle finger all you like. It's amazing that a complete stranger, a man who doesn't even know your child, doesn't know you, doesn't know the father of the child, will come here and plead with you for that child's life. But you will give that man a middle finger and cuss him out and think and say hateful things towards him, and you're here to kill your child. How murderous of a monster do you have to be? for that to be the description of you. Some of you came here this morning to, so, to somehow get away with your sin, to cover it up, to act like it didn't happen. But the Bible says, he that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes his sins shall find mercy. See, you got to confess your sins, admit them, agree with God about your sins, and then forsake, turn away from your sins. Don't continue in your sins. You know, many people, when they have consequences for their sins, take, for example, they're involved in a relationship, and the relationship leaves them brokenhearted, and they shouldn't have been in a sexy and moral relationship in the first place, they turn to alcohol. They turn to drugs to somehow drown away their problems and make things better. But alcohol and drugs, doing those things is sinful. And like I said earlier, sin will never solve the problems for sin. The only way to solve the problems for sin is to stop sinning and turn to the sin problem solver, Jesus. He can solve the problems from your sins. It doesn't take away the consequences for your sins necessarily, but he'll give you peace. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll give you a new heart and new desires. He'll cause you to walk in his ways. And he'll grant you eternal life by his shed blood. As a free gift, God will grant you eternal life. But if you think that sin is going gonna, is gonna to change your sin problem, you're deceiving yourself. Sin will never change your sin problem. Killing your baby, killing your child, will never solve the problem 
the inconvenience of being pregnant in the first place. Now, killing your child will never solve the problem of fornication. Killing your child will never solve the problem of you getting pregnant by a man who's no good. Will never solve those problems. But the true problem solver when it comes to sin is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can solve the problem you have. He'll change your heart. That's what he did for me. 25 and a half years ago, almost now, I was a wicked fornicator, a drunkard, a liar, a thief, a violent person, a hateful person, covetous, lustful, Look at pornography. But in a moment in time, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, June 1997. In a moment in time, Jesus Christ changed my life. He delivered me from my sins. He freed me from my sins. He forgave me of my sins. He's offering you the same thing. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As Jesus Christ offers you salvation, not just salvation for your baby this morning, from your murderous ways, from your attempted murder upon his or her life. Doesn't just offer salvation for the baby, he offers salvation for you. Salvation from hell. Salvation from judgment. Salvation from sin. Jesus Christ said, he that commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave will not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever therefore if the son sets you free you shall be free indeed jesus christ wants to set you free set you free from your sin not just the guilt of it not just the shame of your sin jesus christ doesn't just want to set you free from the condemnation of your sin in hell Jesus wants to set you free from the committing of sin. He doesn't want you to commit sin any longer. He wants you to forsake it instead. You have no good reason to continue in your sin. Your sin has caused you nothing but problems and trials and tribulations and heartache. That's all sin does cause. Sin never brings good. Now, good can come out of sin if you repent of it. If it causes you to, to seek God and realize how much you need Jesus. But that's not good coming out of sin and, and inherently. Sin always brings destruction. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Sin will cost you everything in the end. Sin and the devil make lots of promises. Oh, lots of pleasure. It'll feel so good. Oh, it's no big deal. You can always ask for forgiveness later on. It doesn't tell you what really happens, though. Sin brings shame. It brings guilt. It brings destruction. It brings pain for so many people. Sin destroys lives. And your specific sin this morning, if you go through it, it will destroy a life completely, irreversibly. Don't let that happen. Stop the train wreck now. Stop the sin now. Go and sin no more lest a worse thing happen to you. You know, there's lots of bad things that come from sin. People get, people get drunk and then drive drunk. They get DYs, DWIs. Then they can't drive to work, can't make a living. People get drunk, get high, and they end up in places they didn't think they'd be, puking, throwing up. Because their body's trying to scream out to them, don't do it, stop it. This is not God's will for you. Oftentimes people will get have sex outside of marriage and end up with an STD. They'll end up
dealing with an STI, one that is irreversible, one that medication cannot help, cannot change. And many people, when they engage in sexual immorality, sex outside of marriage, they get pregnant, and then they come and kill their child. So it never does anyone any good. Lying breaks trust, it breaks relationships, brings heartache. Adultery shows unfaithfulness and lack of trustfulness. Sin never does any good. It always brings destruction, always brings heartache. Don't be a, a, a part of the problem by continuing sin. Be a part of the solution by turning from your sin and turning in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ who loved you at the cross. He died the just for the unjust to reconcile sinners back to God. He died the righteous for the wicked to offer you eternal life. Jesus loved you at the cross. Won't you love him back? Won't you love him back by obeying him? Won't you love Jesus back by serving him, by obeying him? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The Bible says this is the message we heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus wants to cleanse you from all your sin. Don't continue in sin. The Bible says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool if you are willing and obedient. As Christ is willing to wash away your sins, cleanse you of your sins, he said he'll, he'll remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and cause you to walk in his ways. So Jesus Christ can do. He's in the life-transforming business. It's been that way forever, and it'll continue to be that way. There's going to come a point in time when it'll be too late for you. Well, God will call you to give an account of your life. Salvation will no longer be offered to you at some point in time. No more offer of forgiveness, no more opportunity, no more chance to get right with God. There'll come a point in time where God will say, enough is enough. But it'll bring his hand of, of wrath his hand of anger upon you. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy the sinners from it. The Bible says when Jesus returns with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly shall be as stubble. The day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. Ma'am, are you here today to have an abortion? Are you here today to kill your baby, your unborn child? Doesn't matter what Georgia says, before God, you have no right to do so. You have no right to kill your baby. 
the right to kill your child. That is life. That is life that God is knitting together in your womb. That is life that is made in the image of God. You have no right to destroy the image of God. No matter what your excuse is, what your justification you give to come here this morning to make this appointment and to go through with the murder of your own child. Not one excuse, not one justification is legitimate in God's eyes. Turn from your sins. Turn to Jesus. He is your hope. He is your only hope. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already. He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's the condemnation. The condemnation you have is that the light has come into the world, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. And we as Christians are called the light of the world too. And light has come and exposed your darkness, and you run from it. Instead of going to the light and allowing your darkness to be exposed and repenting of your darkness and turning from your darkness, you continue in your darkness and run away from the light. Don't run away from Jesus. Don't run to a murderer instead. Don't run to the devil's children instead. Don't be a child of the devil yourself. Instead, be a child of God. Do what is right. Don't allow your child to be killed by the, the murderers, the assassins inside this place. But rather instead, save your child from destruction. Lead them to Jesus. Come to Jesus yourself. Humble yourself. Repent of your sins. Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins might be blotted out, that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. So here we have this morning people coming from Mississippi, Alabama, from Virginia, from Tennessee, to kill their child. It's amazing the lengths people will go to to kill their children. The lengths you'll go to to kill your children just so you can continue to have your sexually immoral fun. They have no repercussions, no responsibility, no accountability for your sin. So are you here this morning to kill your child? Are you here this morning to put your child to death? To pay the baby murderers, the baby assassins? It's not right what you're here to do this morning, no matter how you may sear your conscience, corrupt your conscience, defile your conscience. No matter what lies you may tell yourself or tell others. No matter how many people you get to be on your side and pat you on the back and agree with you, it won't change the fact that abortion is killing a child. Killing your own child. That's what abortion is. No amount of justification will change that. Man, did you come all the way from Mississippi this morning to kill your child? what you did? Driving your nice Jeep all the way from Mississippi to kill your child this morning? Don't kill your baby. Do what is right. Obey God and God will bless you. Sin against God and God will bring cursings in your life. I realize that some of you may have had a one-night stand and had sex with some guy who you don't even know. I hope you realize it's a mistake. But even so, two wrongs don't make a right. Making another mistake, like killing your child, 
won't make it right. It never will. Killing your child will not solve your problems. Repent of your sins. Do what is right. Don't kill your child. Don't kill your unborn child this morning. Don't act like it's no big deal to kill your child this morning. It's a big deal. It's wicked. It's murder to kill your child. You know, if someone is up ahead on those railroad tracks and they hear that, rail, that, uh, that train blowing its ear-piercing horn, they're going to get out of the way if they don't have to run over. And most people will get out of the way. They hear the train coming, they're getting off the tracks, whether an individual or their car. They're getting off the tracks if they don't want to be run over. And here I am today preaching to you about God's wrath, about God's judgment, about his offer of mercy, his offer of kindness and love and, and grace. And you act like the horn isn't being blown. I'm here to tell you, you're going to be run over by the wrath of Almighty God. His mercy is only available for a time. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Today. You may not have no chance. Today is a day of salvation. If you hear his voice, does that harden your heart? Soften your heart. Open your heart to the truth of God's word. Do what is right. Forsake your sins. The Bible says, whereas... You do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Ma'am, are you here to kill your child this morning? Are you here to have an abortion? If you are, ma'am, don't go through with it. Do what is right. Give the child up for adoption, at the least. Or be responsible, be accountable for your actions in the conceiving of this child and do what is right. Be a mother, not a murderer. Be a father, not a coward. You know, the Bible says in this list of sins in Revelation 21, verse 8, it lists the cowardly. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, one time I came out here a few months ago, and this grandmother brought her granddaughter here, and her granddaughter lied to her and told her that she wanted to come here just to get some birth control. She lied to her grandmother. Her grandmother was very angry about that. Some people even lie to kill their children. You know what? That's not surprising people would lie to kill their children. I mean, if you're going to murder a defenseless, voiceless, vulnerable, innocent little child, then lying is nothing to you. Right? Lying is nothing to someone who will do that. But the Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So when I call you to repentance here this morning, it's not just repentance of killing your child or attempting to kill your child or considering to kill your child if you don't go through with it. I'm also calling you to repentance of lying. I'm calling you to repentance of being a coward because the cowardly will not inherit God's kingdom. Are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to have an abortion? You led your child to destruction here this morning? Is that what you're here to do? Repent. Turn from this wicked deed. Do what is right. You have no right before God to kill your child. No matter what Georgia says, you have no right to kill your child. You have no right to murder somebody. Even if you were involved in the conception of that child, you have no right to kill that child. And God is calling you to repentance. God is calling you to childlike, humble faith. To do what is right.
tough decision that we have to make. And you don't know what's going on. Doesn't matter what the reason is, young man. Just mind your business. No, this is my business. You're killing children. That's my business. That's not your business. Yes, it is my business. No, yeah, it is. Is it your decision? Yes. How? It's my decision to come out here and preach the gospel. That's my decision. Hey, watch your mouth, boy. Shame on you, sinner. Watch yourself. You're here to kill your child. You're not going to tell me about anything, you wicked devil. Now, when you get your ass beat, don't fuck I'm shaking in my boots, sinner. When you get your ass I'm shaking in my boots, sinner. I ain't scared of you. I'm a faggot. I got eight children at home, sinner. And I care for them. I love them. I'm a coward like you are killing your children. You're a coward. Coward! You're a coward. You're not a real man. You're a coward. You lead your children to destruction. Shame on you. You got nothing to say to no one, sinner. Can't rebuke anyone for anything. You're wicked. Shame on you. Repent while you still have time. You won't be such a tough guy before God, sinner. Won't be so tough before him. When you give an account for your wickedness, you have nothing to say. You have nowhere to run. You can, you can threaten me with your violence, which is a crime, by the way, sinner. Doesn't surprise me. You're, you're, you're here to kill your own child. Doesn't surprise me you're violent towards a man, a grown man, when you're violent towards a baby who can't speak up for themselves who can't fight back, who has no voice, who can't even run away. They're stuck in the womb of that murderous woman. And here you are bringing your child to destruction. A tough decision. Yeah, a tough decision to kill your child or not. Why is that a tough decision? Why is it a tough decision to let your child live? Doesn't sound too tough to me. Do I kill this person or not? No, you don't kill them ever for any reason, no matter what the justification is. You don't kill that child, period. That's it. Nothing tough about that. Wicked man, wicked woman, cowards, shameful, turn from your sin. And you think I'm being harsh, wait till you stand before God. All I do is judge what I see and hear. But God knows all your thoughts, all your motives, all the intents of your heart. He knows it all. And God's going to bring you into judgment. God will give eternal hell to all those who continue in their sins. Whether it's cowardice, murder, lying, sexual immorality, drunkenness, pot smoking. It's all wicked in God's eyes. And wickedness is what led you to this place in the first place. But while you still have a chance, while you still have a chance, receive the rebuke of the Lord. The Bible said, because you hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, you'd have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, you shall eat the fruit of your own ways and be filled to the full with your own fancies. The Bible says, do not be deceived. You will reap what you sow. If you sow to please the flesh, you'll reap the destruction. If you sow to please the spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. You will reap what you sow. Your actions here this morning, your choices here this morning, you'll give an account for them. There'll be consequences for them. And are you here today to kill your child? Are you here today to have an abortion? to kill that precious little boy, that precious little girl in your womb. We've done nothing wrong, nothing deserving of death. They deserve your protection, not your destruction. That child this morning deserves your protection. Responsibility. Being a mother, not a murderer. Being a father, not a coward. Protecting them. Laying down your life for them. That's what someone who loves will do. Greater love has no one than this Jesus that will lay his life down for his friends. But Jesus said, I give you an example that you should do likewise. He gave an example of love, true love, sacrificial love. And he wants you to be the same way. But instead of being 
having sacrificial love, you're sacrificing your children on the altar of convenience. It's wicked. I call you to repentance. I call you to forsake these wicked things, to turn to Jesus Christ, who alone can save you. Jesus Christ, who alone can deliver you. Sin is, a, sin is the most expensive thing in the universe. Sin is the most expensive thing in the universe. And today, if you go through with it, I pray not. But if you go through with it, it's going to cost you everything. Humble yourself. Soften your heart. Don't harden your heart. Give your life to Jesus Christ, who died for you, who rose again from the grave, defeating death now commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. He offers you what you don't deserve, his mercy. He offers you what you don't deserve, his kindness. And don't think to say in your foolish heart that you're right with God or that you're a Christian while you're here today to kill your child. Don't deceive yourself. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And then it goes on to say this, this is 1 Corinthians 6, now we're in verse 11 now, it goes on to say this about Christians. But such were some of you. See? That they used to be those things, but not those things anymore. Such were, past tense, some of you. But you were washed. But you were justified. But you were sanctified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's what God desires to do. He desires to wash you of your sins, cleanse you. This is a spirit soul level cleansing, not a physical outward cleansing that that this is the kind of cleansing you can't use soap for it no amount of soap or shampoo will cleanse you of your sins no amount of showering or taking a bath will cleanse you from your sins only the blood of jesus christ can cleanse you of your sins only that it's amazing how people can just walk in and out of this murderous place and act like nothing is going on. Nothing, nothing wrong is being done here. We're just killing our babies and going home, going back to work like nothing ever happened. Nope, that's not what's going to happen. Your conscience is going to bother you the rest of your days. Even if you were to get right with God, even if you were to forsake your sins and do what is right before God, you're still going to have this memory. You're still going to have a hard time getting over it. I, I, I can almost guarantee there's people in here today who call themselves Christians while they're killing their child. It's wickedness. It's not okay to kill your child. It's not okay to murder your own child. Is it okay to bring your child to the baby assassins in here and have them put to death? It's not okay. That child has done nothing wrong, nothing deserving of death, the death penalty. That child deserves life. Just because you were having a little fun and had sex outside of marriage and got pregnant and conceived a child and now you don't want it doesn't mean you can reverse it. That's the way things work. God is calling you to repentance this morning to change your heart, change your mind, to deliver that child from the destruction you brought him or her here. Take part in. God has called you to be a mother, not a murderer. God has called you to be a father, not a coward. Only the cowardly man would leave their child to destruction. Only the cowardly man would lead their child to destruction here this morning. The real man would stand up for their child. Let's say for this, just for example, you got a woman pregnant and you wanted to have the child, but she didn't. What should you do? Only, the, unfortunately, the state has given the authority to her. 
Well, you definitely shouldn't drive her here. You definitely shouldn't pay for the abortion. Do whatever it takes to convince her not to kill the child. And if she goes through, they have nothing to do with her ever again. She's a murderer of your child. And can you imagine being in a, a court of law and someone had just killed your child, just viciously killed your child, led them to destruction? They go to jail for, for the rest of their life, maybe a death penalty even. There's a woman who brought her grandchild here. Her grandchild lied to her about why she was coming here. And she talked about disowning her and wanted nothing to do with her anymore because she's here to kill her child. Killing your child is not okay. It is not right. There is no justification for the murder of your child. Not one. Repent today. Repent while you still can. While there's still breath in your lungs. While your heart is still beating, repent, give up your sins, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you.